Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, this is Braid School. And if you clicked on that thumbnail, you already know what you're here for. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into this step-by-step -step tutorial on these crisscross knot lists. They all over the gram. You want some, your clients want some. So let's get into this video. The hair we're going to be using for today's look is the Shake and Go Q Professional Pre-Stretch Braiding Hair. This hair I actually featured in a video a couple of videos back so I'll link that in the cards above so you can check that out. Today's video is not sponsored but let me tell you I love this hair so that's what we're going with. I'm going to use two packs one in a 1B and one in a T27 for a little pop of color. Say hello to our favorite model Tiffany. I'm going to start by sectioning her hair from front to back. I'm basically going to cut across from the top of each ear. Then I'm going to locate her center part and separate the front into two sections. For products today, I have a couple of newbies for you, which happen to be from my new line, the VLS Hair Braided Beauty Collection. That's right, you heard me. We've got a product line, y'all. The Edge Slayer and Styling Foam are the first of six products I'll be releasing over the next few weeks. I've been trying and testing products forever and I finally feel a thousand percent confident I've developed the best ones made specifically for braiders. I'll be demonstrating both of these products in today's video and once you see these in action, you can go on ahead and head over to the website and pick up your own. Just click the link in the description box below to place your order and use code BBC1021 to receive 10% off your order. Starting with the Edge Slayer, a little goes a long, long way. Not only does it hold them edges down with no flaking or residue, it's perfect for getting crispy parts, which is what we need to achieve today. But besides all that, what I love the most is that it plays very well with other products, like our old faithful Shine and Jam here. But since this product has been on back order for most of the year, I'm actually on the hunt for a new version of it. So if any of you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. They would be greatly appreciated. In addition to our Edge Slayer, we're going to need rubber bands. I'm going with black, but you can use any color you wish. Starting with the top left, I'm going to section off this section into three large sections. Essentially, I'm gonna do six large sections across. And within each section, we're going to split those in half. You guys see how crispy that part is? There is section one, on to section two. Starting with the first section closest to the ear, I'm going to split that section right down the middle. This section is a little bit smaller, so I'm going to create four boxes which I'm going to connect together. We really want the front to lay as flat as possible, so that's why I'm going in with my edge layer and smoothing it through the roots. That way everything is nice and clear and precise. The idea of this look is to have those parts nice and clear so you can see the delineation between each section. When you're installing your rubber bands, they do not have to be extra tight. You just want them tight enough so that they will hold each section in place. As you can see, I'm using my index finger to hold it down with each rotation. Once I've created my first box, I want to create my second box directly above it. If you guys have seen any of my braidless crochet videos, this is essentially what we're doing in the front of her head. We're doing a braidless crochet, but in this case, we're crisscrossing them to create a design. So yeah, I'm the queen of braidless crochet. So I've got a crap ton of those videos up here for your viewing pleasure. I'll be sure to link that playlist above. I've got my first two sections in place. All I'm going to do is crisscross them over into the next boxes. You will want to have some clips handy to make sure you're clipping things out of the way so that they don't get in the way of each crisscross.
And there we have section one. I'm gonna go ahead and clip that out of the way and move on to section two. I'm gonna show you section two in detail and then fast forward through the rest of it. So I'm gonna let you guys just follow along with this part. For section two, I'm doing three boxes on each side because I want them to be a similar size as possible to the ones I started with. And one thing I want you guys to really note is that the thicker your client's hair is, you may have to either braid or twist each section down because what's gonna happen is, is if you have coarser hair or more frizzier hair or thicker hair, that hair is going to get frizzier over time if it's not tamed down. So you'll notice as I get to the last section there, the hair is starting to gradually get thicker. I'm going to twist her hair so that it's a smaller size as I move to each section. If I left it out the way it was, then it would frizz faster over time. I also go through and spot check each section to make sure that it's not too tight. Now I went ahead and did her knotless in the back because you guys have seen me do knotless a thousand times plus one. There are a million videos on how to do it so I'll be sure to link that in the cards above as well. What I'm showing you here is how to connect your sections in the front to a knotless braid in the back. So pay very close attention. As you can see with each section I already have two legs of a braid ready to go for me. So to create that third leg, I'm gonna use a crochet needle to feed in a small piece of hair between the two legs. And that's gonna create my third leg. Then I'm gonna start doing a knotless braid as I would normally do using those three legs. Don't worry, I'll demonstrate this two times. Go the second go around, I'm pulling it, the piece of hair through both sections and joining that hair together to create one leg. Then I'm using the hair, her natural hair from the other two sections as the other two legs. I'm gonna keep feeding hair until the braid is about the size of the other ones in the back. And I'm gonna do my best to tuck her natural ends in as best I can. For the ends of her braids, I'm actually stopping a couple of inches before the end because we're going to be curling them. But before I start curling ends, I'm going to set all of her foundation with the Braided Beauty Collection Style and Set Foam. This foam is maximum hold, designed specifically for protective styles and braids. It has the strongest hold you will ever see on the market and smells really, really good. 
going to go ahead and apply that to her foundation so that it has time to dry while we're curling the ends. For the ends, I like to use any cheap styling mousse. This is my favorite. It works very well for synthetic hair. I'm going to use that to smooth out the bottom of the hair and then proceed to curling them up. While my hot water is still boiling, I'm going to go ahead and trim any flyaways she has on the braids themselves. Once we get her all dipped, we're going to let these curls cool off before we release them. apply a generous amount of the styling mousse again to the curls to get them nice and clumped and stay in place. So there you have it, the crisscross knotless braids. This is what I consider large knotless. I see a lot of people asking how much to charge for this or what category does it fall under. For me, it falls under tribal or Fulani category. Same thing, just instead of braids in the front, you're doing rubber bands. However, rubber bands are not the end-all be-all. You can very well braid each section into each other, granted the client has enough hair to achieve it. Of course, as always, if you learned something, make sure you thumbs this video up and share it with a friend. Don't forget, if you would like to purchase the Braided Beauty Collection Edge Slayer or Style and Set Foam, make sure you head over to the link in the description box below and use code BBC1021 to get your 10% off. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching this video, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye!